Moving on to guitar two, which is uh, here. Um, same um, signal chain, um, Renaissance EQ, um, but on this EQ, um, uh, the EQ moves I did here were a little bit different. Because the two guitars sounded very similar in tone, um, I wanted to distinguish um, them from each other. Um, one by spreading them across the stereo field, you know, putting guitar one more in the right channel and guitar two more in the left. But also wanted to pop out the highs a little bit more on this guitar so it sounded a little bit different. So you don't have the same exact tone so you can, so the ear can pick out the difference between the two guitars as they're playing side by side. So let me, um, and then we also used a, a compressor, um, a little bit different type of a compressor, but a Waves compressor, the C1 compressor. Same kind of compression, not too much compression, maybe 3 dB of compression. But let's take a listen to the EQ and I'm going to mute um, this first guitar. And this is going to be more panned over to the left when you're listening to it. So let me move it back to the center so you get a better listen. Um, here we go. Close enough. Okay, so let's take a quick listen to this guitar. Okay, bypass the EQ there. Okay, so as you heard there, this guitar was a lot darker sounding than the other one. So when I uh, bypassed the EQ, you instantly heard, hopefully on your end, um, where things got a lot more muddy, a lot more dark sounding. That's due to all the low end um, that we rolled off. So we ended up rolling off a lot of uh, low end here. Um, we started around 120 hertz, just rolled everything off here. Again, took a, a scoop out of here at around almost 1K took about almost 5 dB out because it kicked some of that mid-range out. And then I popped in a little bit of some highs around uh, 4K, almost 4.5 dB to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So it sounds different from the other guitar. The guitar sounded similar without any processing on their own, although this guitar was a little bit darker. Um, so I wanted to have a little bit different of an EQ curve on each one to kind of distinguish the two. Um, and that's why I did that. And then again on the compressor... Um, Oops, here we go. The uh, C1 compressor, I'll play that so you can kind of see what we're doing here for compression. Compressed gain reduction meters right here. We're only looking at about 3 dB of compression. No, no big shakes here, so here we go. Or actually, this might be a little bit more than 3 dB. Let's take a listen. Excuse me, I, I, I misinformed you. The, the gain reduction meters here, not here. This is the threshold setting. Um, I haven't used this compressor in a while, so I apologize. So the, you're going to be looking at the, the, the gain reduction meter here in orange. The threshold is, what, is what's set here. So you'll see as I move this down, the threshold moves. You can see that in the graph, and therefore you'll have more compression. So you can take a listen to that. A lot more compression. So there we go. So that's that's the compressor. So now when I bring these two uh, guitars in together and kind of blend them, um, let me move this uh, back towards the left. So we have this we have this guitar two pan to the left, guitar one pan to towards the right. Not all the way, about fifty percent each way. So if I solo both of them now and bring them both in, you can kind of hear uh, the two kind of playing together. So let's take a listen to that. Okay, so there we go. So those are our three guitar tracks, and you, as you can hear, hopefully, the you still have the uh, the guitar that's playing all the singular notes. You could still hear that out pop it. You could still hear that, uh, you know, separated from these other two guitars. Everything sounds nice and clear, and, and a lot of that has to do with all the EQ moves that we've done to be able to make space for these guitars to sit in with the rest of the mix. So you can hear these two guitars that sound a little bit different from each other now, and they're panned left and right. 
<clears throat> and we have this arpeggiated uh, guitar kind of panned over to the left. You could still hear those notes uh, playing, but you can also now, you could still hear the bass as he does all those little licks and those little runs. Everything kind of just fits nicely and you can still hear the synth. So nothing is getting buried. And that's really the key when you're, when you're mixing this stuff, you want to be able to, you should be able to focus in on a certain instrument and you should be able to hear it clearly. If you have a, if you're struggle hearing something, that means that you have frequencies that are competing with each other with other instruments and you got to carve out some room and do stuff with panning and such to be able to hear everything nice and clear. And to take you back to a tip I gave you at the beginning of the video, if you mix in mono, it makes that critical listening I just mentioned much more difficult because now not everything is panned. Everything's kind of coming right up the center. So you really have to be good with your equalizers and your compressors to make sure that you could hear everything and that you've carved out space in the freak in the frequency range to be able to make uh, instruments sit and play nice together. So that's one of the reasons why it's good to mix in mono because if you can hear everything nice and clear and you can distinguish all the instruments in mono, when you bring that out to stereo and you set the panning up and set the levels, everything is going to sound much cleaner, much more professional, much more polished, in my opinion, for what it's worth. So uh, that's kind of the guitars and, and, and how the guitar tracks ended up for this particular song. Again, not a lot of uh, EQ moves is rolling off a lot of the low end, brightening up a little bit where it made sense, 3 dB of compression, and that was really it. So now we have all the, the drums, the bass, the synth, and all the electric guitars. So now let's move over to our acoustic guitars. Okay, on acoustic guitars, let's uh, start with these two tracks here. These pretty much play through the entire song from beginning to end. So we have an acoustic guitar, one a left and right, panned hard left and right. Um, <clears throat> let me just solo those and I will bring them up a little bit so you can kind of hear the beginning of the song or where these kind of come in. Okay, so that's kind of where we, uh, where we started or where we ended up, I'm sorry. So let me show you the uh, signal chain. Uh, again, <clears throat> virtual tape machines, Again, into the console, into uh, a new, oh no, same EQ I showed you on drums, into the Cambridge EQ. And okay, the EQ moves here, again, very subtle. L rolling off a lot of the low ends, around 138 hertz, just cutting everything out to get rid of that big boominess in the, in the uh, acoustic guitars. Carved out a little bit here, at about two, almost three dB of compression at about 300 hertz and put a little bit of a, a boost here in about 10K to bring out a little bit of the brightness. And if I remember right, I think I did the same thing on the second acoustic guitar because it was pretty much, I believe, just <clears throat> the guitar played uh, twice, um, double tracked is all it was. Same guitar double tracked from what I can tell. So the uh, the frequency uh, curve here is, or the EQ curve is about the same. Use the same EQ. The difference uh, here uh, from all the other guitars is I used a different type of compressor here. On um, the acoustic guitars, I use the Universal Audio um, LA-2A, which is my favorite compressor for acoustic guitars. Real simple uh, compressor to use. It has two knobs, there's a gain knob, your input gain and a peak reduction. The higher you turn the peak reduction, the more the needle's gonna move to the left, the more compression you're gonna get and the gain knob you're gonna use to make up for the make up the gain that you lost in the compression. What's really great about the LA-2A, it's awesome on vocal, it's awesome on anything, but it sounds great in particular on acoustic guitar and vocals because you can really, <clears throat> really drive this compressor and it doesn't sound like it's being compressed. A lot of other types of compressors um, it will, when you drive them too hard, you get kind of that pumping feeling um, sound if you've ever experienced that. And on this, you really don't get it. You could drive this kind of hard and it still sounds musical and it doesn't give you that real big pumping. Although I don't drive it too hard, but on the acoustic guitars, <clears throat> because again, you want to have things, you want things to sound even when you're strumming acoustic guitar. You don't want all these peaks and all these dips. Let's take a listen to this acoustic guitar and I will go ahead and pan this back towards the center because we're just going to play one at a time here. Okay. And I will um, bypass the compressor, or I'll just turn it on and off here, toggle it off first and then on, so you can kind of hear what it's kind of doing. So here is the acoustic guitar, one guitar um, with the Slate Digital stuff, the Cambridge EQ without the compressor, and then I'll, I'll engage the compressor.
Okay, so you heard hopefully when I kicked it in that things got a little bit brighter, a little bit tighter, and you can see, and I'll play this again, just keep your eye on the needle here. You can see it's right around one, one and a half dBA compression, but at times you'll see it spike up to almost three dBA compression where he's strumming a little bit harder. Again, kind of tightening up the uh, the performance so it sounds a little bit more even and you don't hear these big, uh, you know, strums that just jump out and jump out of the mix and kind of, you know, distract the listener. And that's really what compression does, especially on acoustic guitar. It makes it sound... Uh, makes the performance sound much more even so keep an eye on this uh, needle as as he's playing these little passages i'll keep it on and you can kind of see what i mean So you can see how it went up from about one, one and a half dB all the way up to two and a half, almost three dB, um, and then bouncing back and forth. So again, it's tightening up that performance. So that was the first acoustic guitar. Second guitar, same exact thing, same EQ, same compressor. And again, this was, a, it sounded like this was just double tracked to me. Um, I hope I'm right about that. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Now, what I would have normally done <clears throat> but because I was not allowed to use a PreSonus plugin, <laughs> and I didn't have another plugin uh, that would give me like a flanger effect, I would normally use a stock plugin for that. What I would normally do is just like on the other electric guitars, I would want these two guitars to sound slightly different. So what I would probably do is on one of the guitars, I put a slight chorus or a slight flange on it. Again, just so it sounds a little different, make it a little more interesting. Um, I didn't do that here just because I didn't have a plugin. I didn't, I didn't have a third party plugin of a flanger. That's what I really wanted to use. I would have used a PreSonus one, but then I would have been breaking the rules and Johnny would have would have killed me. So, um, but that's just another little idea. If you want things to be, you want to hear things and separate things, you can use panning, obviously. But the other thing to do is to put an effect on one of the guitars so it sounds a little bit different. So here's both guitars. Uh, playing together, those both acoustic guitars. Okay, so you, as you could see when we were looking at the tape machine and at the virtual console, again, not pushing very hard, just kind of little tape saturation, a little bit of that warmth, that analog goodness that, that makes these acoustic guitars really stand out and sound really nice. <clears throat> and the guy was a, a great player too, which makes it even better. He played really consistently. He had a, a, probably a really good, high quality guitar. It sounded really good, a couple of really good microphones on it, and that's the kind of guitar song you get. We didn't really do a whole heck of a lot. So those were the first two acoustic guitars. The second two acoustics, uh, let me take a look at what they were doing here. Okay, these were just doing the intros. There was a little lick, a couple of little licks here. You could see it didn't play through most of the track, just really in the beginning. Uh, let's take a listen to that quickly. So you say just a little intro, a little interesting little fills there just to give it some, um, to just give it some, uh, you know, some nice flavor in the beginning. That's all it really was. And what we did on these acoustic guitars basically is I just, again, ran it through the Slate Digital stuff, put a little bit of an EQ. Again, uh, this is, uh, we used this before, I've showed you this before, the Q10 Parametric E2, six band EQ, rolled off the low end at around 150 hertz, carved out some of the boxiness, and that was really about it. Didn't do much. Didn't even compress these, which um, probably should have, in all honesty. I should probably put a compressor like an LE-2A on here. I didn't do that. I thought it sounded pretty good on its own. But now, in looking at this, I probably should have done that. So 
Here's a lesson. Double check your work. <laughs> but anyway, for this example, they sound fine. Uh, so again, here's what it sounds like. I'll bring it and blend it into taste with the other acoustics so you can kind of get a feel for the way it would sit in the mix. <laughs> So that was kind of it. Um, nothing major there. Um, sat nice with the other acoustic guitars. So that was uh, these two tracks. Moving over to guitar three left and right. What were those playing? I don't remember. Oh, okay. So they're just playing again in different sections. Here, let's uh, solo those along with these other ones. And let's just hear what we got there. Okay, so just playing in the in the chorus sections, it, it sounds like. Um, so again, here we did use the LA-2A compressor. <clears throat> we used, a, again, a Waves uh, EQ. On both these tracks, panned them left and right, about 30% of the way on the left, 30% of the way on the right. Rolled off real low end, around 150 hertz. Took out some of the boxiness here. And around 500 hertz, no top ends, nothing major. LA-2A little bit of compression here. Let's take a listen to this so you can just see it. Move this out of the way. Here we go. So you can see here I was using a lot more compression than I did on the other tracks, about 5 to 7 dB. And the reason for that is now that I look at this, if you look at the waveforms, you can see how <clears throat> excuse me how um how many see all these big peaks here you could see how this thing was strummed a little bit uh harder so i was trying to grab the peaks a little bit um a little bit more and bring them down a little bit so it's a little bit more consistent and again what i like about the la2a is you can really drive the peak reduction and it doesn't give you that pumping sound or that pumping uh you know dynamic that you get when with a with a typical compressor it still sounds very musical and it tightens things up and it doesn't really sound compressed so, and I did the same thing with the, uh, with the second, um, acoustic. Yeah. Just copied the, the effects over same EQ curve, same everything. Um, so again, let's just take a listen to both those guitars and I'll blend them in, uh, to taste here. Okay, so there you go. It's just a chorus section for these guitars to kind of give the chorus a little bit of a, of a lift, a little bit more energy. I'm sure that's why they, they did that when they recorded them, and it's a good idea. It sounds great. So now we're on to the last set of um, acoustic guitars, these four tracks here, which are the harmonic uh, tracks. And though the harmonics were played, I think, at the very beginning right here. So we'll loop this a little bit. And this is just to give, you know, kind of a little cool little thing, a, a little thing in the intro, which I kind of like. Here's kind of what it sounds like. Let me... Uh, let me solo those for you. Um. So 
So that was pretty much it on the uh, on the acoustic guitar for the harmonics. It was uh, you know pretty just a little tasty uh, thing there. Uh, and just so I forgot to mention on the two acoustic guitar buses, um, I ran them through some reverb, so they give it a little bit more space. Um, and the second a uh, guitar, uh, we, have, we have one bus here for the, all the um, acoustics, but on the second bus, it was because I used these four harmonic uh, acoustic guitars to this singular bus. So it was separate from the other acoustic guitars so I can control the, vol the, the balance between the volumes a little bit better. <clears throat> and instead of putting a, a compressor on every one of these uh, guitars, I just put it on the bus. And again, using the LA-2A. Um, as the compressor of choice and um, the wave parametric EQ again four band compressor rolling off a lot of the low end for those harmonics and didn't do anything else that was really about it it sounded great on its own and then I just used a little bit of comp a lot of compression here actually um, in order to uh, you know make sure you hear you heard all the harmonics as you could see here some of them weren't hit as well as the other ones or as loudly so I wanted to make sure they sounded even so I'll show you what that looks like on the meter here when we play those back So again, by doing that, you're only getting about 1 to 2 dB of compression, but it's really tightening it up nice and it's making them louder. If you took away this compressor, you'd have a hard time hearing um, uh, you'd have a hard time hearing some of these uh, harmonics. So it just kind of tightened them up and kind of made it um, just sound uh, a little bit more um, even is the word I was looking for. Sorry about that. So that was the acoustic guitars for the most part. And again, there was, I forget how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten acoustic guitar tracks, including all those harmonics. So that's kind of where we were at on the acoustic guitars and uh, give you one more quick listen at the beginning of the song where they're most obvious. All the guitars kind of blended together with the rest of the band. And there we go. So there's our acoustic guitars. So now we're gonna take a look, last but not least, the vocal tracks. Okay, let's move on to lead vocals. So here we are, we had a lot of vocal tracks in this song. We had uh, primarily a, a lead vocal track here, the main lead vocal, and then there was a section of the song where a second lead vocal track kind of came in. And then the rest of the tracks are pretty much backing vocals, and then a bunch of chorus backing vocals. Um, and some high harmonies in, in those sections as well. So <clears throat> I believe I ran them out to two different buses. I have a, a lead vocal bus, um, which has those, uh, the backing vocals and the, and, the, and the two lead vocal channels. And then I have these chorus vocals, which have all these uh, harmonies, these six or two, four, six, eight tracks here. So let's just start with the, uh, the lead vocal itself. So Here's what it kind of sounds like. Let's uh, just take a quick listen in, to the beginning of the song. Like the rain falls. Yeah, yeah. It's been too long since I last heart to heart. But honesty came knocking at my door Been so scared every time she took a look around before But tonight I'm moving into her And out of my comfort zone And I know, oh, 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 I won't let go Okay, so there we go. So that was the finished uh, vocal 
uh, track. Um, and here's the compressor, as you can see, of the LA-2A again, about 3 dB of compression and a little bit more at times. Really wanted to uh, kind of squeeze that vocal and get it to come right out front and get, get right up in front and sit on top of the mix. Uh, so I put a little bit more compression on this than, uh, than, than usual. Um, before the compressor, we had the Cambridge EQ. Again, rolling off everything at right around 150. Had a real deep kind of a voice. Um, it was kind of muddy. So by rolling it off at around 150, got rid of um, with, with a gentle slope. Got rid of some of that real low end. Took a little bit out at 500 and a little bit of a shelf up here just to bring out the brightness. And I will uh, toggle the EQ on and off for you in a second so you can kind of hear the difference. Uh, before the EQ, I actually used a, a de-esser. Um, this is a Waves uh, de-esser because there was a lot of S's in this. When you take this off, it was really uh, poking out a little bit too much, especially when I tried to brighten up um, the mix a little bit. It just it just poked out a little too much. So I have a, a de-esser on here to kind of tame the S's a little bit. And then, um, as usual, the uh, virtual tape machine by Slate Digital and the virtual, uh, the VCC Brit Neve, um, the Neve Council uh, collection. So that was the finished vocal. And we're also using a reverb, the Dream Verb, as we talked about earlier, which I can show you down here for the reverb. Again, on just a, a hall type of a setting, maybe 50% wet, 50% dry. Not a ton of reverb, but just to give it some space. Rolled off a little bit of the high end uh, in the EQ here. Uh, again, this is made by Universal Audio. This is a, a really nice reverb um, where you can shape the EQ of the reverb. You can, uh, you know, the wet and dry mix is adjustable like most. The, uh, the, the, the tail of the reverb is all adjustable, all customized. Uh, you have all kinds of, you could adjust the reflections, adjust the type of materials that you're using, you know, hardwood floor versus air, the shape of the reverb, the positioning. I mean, it's, it's a pretty um, intense uh, reverb. You got a lot of different um, settings that you can adjust. I typically just put it on a, like a hall setting and then just kind of uh, bring the, uh, the mix, the wet dry mix down to about 50%. And I would roll off usually the top end of the, um, of the, uh, of the reverb EQ wise. So it's not so bright. And then I extended the tail a little bit. I think it was like 1.5. I ex extended it to almost uh, 2.9. So that's the reverb. Um, and then we're also using a delay on this vocal. The delay comes before the reverb. And this is a new plugin uh, made by PMP called the Echo Flex. Um, actually got a really nice set of uh, plugins. This is actually a free plugin by them. I think if you go to their website, if you Google PMP, or uh, plug and mix, um, I think is what they call it. Um, and you, if you like their Facebook page, you could download one of their um, one of their plugins for free and try it. Uh, but if you bought these on their own, I think these are like a fifty dollar. Each one of their uh, plugins is about 50, 60 bucks. Pretty affordable, pretty basic delay. Just put it in sync with the song on uh, eighth notes, just to give it a little bit of thickness, a little bit of a delay effect. It's it's really subtle. Um, and that was it for the vocal for the lead vocal track anyway. So let's. Let's go back to the, oh, and again, I have it on, a, on, a, on its own bus, no inserts, but just so I can control that separate. So what I'll do is the biggest difference you'll probably hear is the, uh, is the EQ, where I will start with it off and then toggle it on, and you'll hear that the low end kind of goes away and it gets a little bit brighter. So let's take a listen to that. So with the EQ off now. Like the rainfall. Yeah, yeah. It's been too long since I last heart to heart. But honesty came knocking at my door. Been so scared every time she took a look around before. You see here how the low end really disappears when you uh, when you bring the EQ on. And actually, 150 is probably a little much. You should probably bring that down to about 130 or so, 127. Let's give that a listen so it's not so thin. Every time she took a look around before, but tonight I'm moving into her and out of my comfort zone better so you get a little bit more of the chest in there um so that was the eq curve and again when you get to the uh and oh yeah and i have the uh the ds or uh, i'll pop that on and off so you can kind of hear the difference there were a lot of s's in the song so let me start with it off and i'll turn it on and i know oh 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 
and closer in the word she how it kind of gets a little bit brittle it gets a little bit in your face so now let me put the compressor uh excuse me the de-esser on and it's it doesn't completely take it away but it, it tames it a little bit be closer. hear it on the word closer let me rewind it again here's what the here's what the de-esser off listen to the word closer the s and closer when I pull a little bit closer. okay now let's listen to that again with the de-esser on. See how it just tames it a little bit, takes a little bit of that brittleness off. That's all the de-esser really does. Uh, again, this is made by Waves, just a basic uh, good old de-esser. So that was the de-esser. Um, and again, running uh, through some delay as a send first, not a lot. Um, and then into the reverb, the dream verb, and that was our lead vocal sound. Just sees both halves of my heart Pull her a little bit closer Sees everything I'm not Pull her a little bit closer Sees everything we are And all my forces fall apart Okay, so that was our, our, our main vocal track. Uh, so now let's take a look at this second lead vocal. It's kind of a background vocal. It's called Lead Vocal 2. And again, I pretty much used the same uh, settings as I did with the with the main vocal track. Uh, an EQ, rolled it off around 150. Um, Cambridge EQ, cut out some 500. Um, no shelf on this one, and actually pulled out a little bit more, a little carving out here at um, 4K, about 3 dB. Um, it was a little bit uh, harsh, so I pulled it out a little bit. And it just sits nice, kind of sits right underneath that lead vocal in the spots where it comes in. Um, no de -esser needed on this. Again, the LA-2A, a little, little bit uh, of compression. And again, running through the Slate Digital stuff. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. This is for So actually that's the bridge section that's where that vocal comes in at one point at, at the bridge so i just tried to blend the uh lead vocal on the verses and the chorus with the bridge so they kind of sound the same volume So there's your bridge vocal again some reverb some delay uh, pretty much the same effects chain as i did with the with the vocals for the choruses and the verses so now we have these background vocals um and there's a background vocal left and right and i panned them about 70 percent to the left on one side another 70 percent to the right on the other um and these were let me see where these were playing these weren't playing throughout the entire song one spot here and then really at the end towards the end of the song here and that was really it. I don't even think I compressed these. I might have compressed them on the, I don't think I compressed them on the bus, did I? No. Uh, so I didn't even have to compress these. Um, again, they're just background vocals. Let me uh, give you a quick listen to that so you can see. Uh, we used a, a different EQ uh, here, the Renaissance EQ uh, by Waves uh, for the background vocals, a little different than the Cambridge. Again, rolled off the low ends, carved out right around that 500 hertz range again, put a little bit of a shelf on it. Really about it. So let me uh, solo those two tracks so you can hear those in context with the rest. So that was it just these little ad libs at the end of the song and there was one little uh, small section in the middle where these two tracks came in 
but that was it for our backing vocals. Um, and now we start getting into these chorus vocals, which uh, really build up the end of the song. You can see they come through um, all in here, these six or seven tracks. Uh, the last chorus of the song, or before the bridge, I'm sorry, and then the, the, the double up on the end. That's where these uh, vocals came in. So let's uh, let's just loop this a little bit so you can hear that as we're fooling around with these. So um, what do we do here? Um, again, we had one, two, three, four. Uh, the first four, I panned them hard right and left. I just put two to the left, two to the right. Um, they were just singing uh, different octaves of each other to kind of just spread them out and make them sound full. So the um, the effects chain here, uh, honestly, oh, actually on this, I ran them through the Slate Digital plugins like I ran everything else. And I believe on the bus, yeah, on the bus I put an EQ and then one compressor so I could kind of group them all together so I didn't have to have eight different compressors for virtually the same background um, vocal tracks here. So project saving here, hold on a second. Okay, so uh, this here we use the uh, Renaissance EQ again. Um, one common EQ curve for all these vocal tracks. Um, again, rolling off the low end um, at around 92 hertz, pulling out a little bit at 515 and putting a little bit of a shelf at the top. And then we added some reverb and delay to make it sound big. Um, a lot more reverb than I would on the on the lead vocal track to get really give it that uh, kind of a choir kind of a sound, almost like a church kind of a feel, and then some delay as well to uh, to thicken it up. So that's what these tracks all sound like. These uh, three, six, seven, eight. These first four. I'll do those first, and then I'll bring in the high parts um, after that. So let's take a listen to these four these uh, four background vocals here. So that's it. So it just kind of really fills up the uh, the bottom, <clears throat> fills out the sound, I should say. And then we had these last four vocal tracks, and these were the high harmonies to what you just heard. Um, and again, I panned them hard left and hard right. Um, and let's just take a look at the signal chain. I believe it was the same. Yep, virtual tape machine, virtual console, again, to the same EQ, same LA-2A compressor, same reverb and delay. So let's bring those in. So now you got the, the whole enchilada here. So that's pretty much it. That's the uh, that's the entire uh, song, um, pretty much. Uh, at this point, um, all the faders may have, as I've been moving around and showing you guys example, the mix is probably slightly off now. Um, I'd have to rebalance things just a little bit as I was moving things around. But I'll do that and I will put at the very end of this video, I'll play the whole song through so you can kind of listen to what the final mix really sounded like. Although I think you got a pretty good idea here. Um, Again, really good song, recorded really, really well. Um, it was a pleasure to work on this. And again, I thank Rick and the guys over at PreSonus for um, for allowing uh, Johnny and myself to uh, to work on this. It was a lot of fun. And as I said, it, this was more of a summary. I know I didn't show you the nuts and bolts of how I adjusted the compressor, the attack, the release, the threshold, or the EQs, and how I would you know sweep and look for offending frequencies and all that. I'm gonna do that in the next video. This was kind of more of an overview, a summary, and this video is probably getting close to two hours long. Anyway, I wanted to go into a lot of detail to try to help. I hope I didn't bore the hell out of anybody here. Um, any, I know there's a lot of ways to do things, and I know you probably, you may have agreed with some of the things I've done. You may disagree with some of the things that I've done. Um, there is no one way to do this. There are no real rules at the end of the day. If it sounds good, it is good. And if it sounds good to you and it sounds good to your client, that's really all that matters. Um, and so but the way you get from point A to point B, there's a million ways to do this. This is just one take on how I handled this song. And from song to song, from project to project, I myself do things differently. It's not always the same. But the whole point was trying to use just third-party plugins 
to give you guys some exposure to some of these plugins if you've never worked with them or have heard of them before. And so not to show that it's any better or worse than using stock plugins, because I'm sure Johnny's mix is going to be fantastic as well. Um, it's just to kind of show you some different ways of doing things. And then hopefully uh, some of you guys learned a few things. If you have any questions, you can certainly um, email me at vision recording studios at yahoo.com. You can leave a comment on our YouTube page under this video or on the home studio trainer. Um, and once we get to the next live stream uh, with the home studio trainer, you guys will be able to ask questions and I'll try to help. Um, and if you have any recommendations or pointers or things you want to share with me, please, we're always learning. I love to learn from other people as well. So certainly, uh, you know, shoot over an email to me. Okay. One last thing before we uh, conclude this, uh, this long video here is I wanted to show you the mix bus, um, and show you, you know, again, what the effect is of, um, you've been, you've been listening to me talk about the slate digital virtual council and the tape machine. And I wanted to be able to show you. Um, what and sh you know, listen to what happens when you turn this plugin globally on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass this and turn off the VCC, the virtual council, and they're all grouped to group one together, which means when I turn this off, oops, okay, turn it, sorry, turn that off. All the VCCs on all the channels have now gone off <clears throat> and then I'm going to flip it back on. Pay attention to the the real low end and kind of the, the real top end. You're going to hear, hopefully if you're listening to this on a good set of speakers, good set of headphones, you're going to hear uh, the, the song automatically get tighter and get a little beefier. And that's what this plugin is really intended to do. It just doesn't really boost the low and the high end. It kind of tightens it up and there's kind of a, a warmth there um, is really what this plugin does. So I'm going to play a little bit of the beginning without it and then you'll see me flip it in to playing you can hear the effect of that because i think it's important seeing as you see seen as you watch me talk about this the entire video i should let you listen to what the overall effect of this plugin is so let's take a listen again first without it then i'll flip it in <laughs> Since I last heart to heart But honesty came knocking at my door Been so scared every time she took a look around before But tonight I'm moving into her and out of my comfort zone Okay, so hopefully you heard the uh, the difference there by toggling the uh, VCC on and off. Again, the bottom end gets a little tighter. The topping gets a little bit more sparkly, for lack of a better word. And the mid-range just kind of glues together. Again, it, it emulates that warmth uh, analog character that these old, uh, you know, mixing desks, in this case, the Neve, would provide. Um, and so... Again, it's subtle. It's not like, wow, night and day. It's like, wow, if you really listen, you can hear the difference. But it is subtle, and that's the key. Um, now let's do the same thing with the uh, virtual tape machine. Um, same kind of thing. I'm going to flip it on and off, and you're going to hear the difference. Again, it's more in the in the low low to low mid frequencies. You're going to hear the kick drum, the bass guitar. They're going to stick out. They're going to tighten up. They're going to poke through the mix a little bit more. So let's take a listen. Right now it's... I'll bypass it. You see the lights here on the meters go off and then they come back on um, and, and take take a listen to what this kind of does. But I know that she's a part of them. I just know, I just know. So tonight I'm going to use these arms to try and make her see. Now she knows I won't let go. Okay, so again, it's subtle. Um, you can feel the kick drum poke through a little bit more. The bass guitar tightens up a little bit more. It gives it that 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 tape saturation, a little bit of compression that the old tape machines are known for. Again, it's not a world of difference. It's subtle, but it's there. So when you when you when you make that 
combination with the VCC and the virtual tape machines together, it just gives it that little more uh, old school sound, a little more polished, a little more glued, a little more life, a little more excitement. When you turn those plugins off, to me, it sounds like the excitement kind of goes away just a little bit. And unless you kind of really sit down and listen to it, um, <clears throat> A, B, it on and off, on and off like we did, it's hard to hear the difference. Um, or it's easy to hear the difference when you go A, B it. Um, so I, I would recommend you go out to Slate Digital's website, take a look at those two plugins. Um, again, that to me, the virtual tape machine and the VCC are a nice um, complement to the stock plugins you can use with Studio One already or any other third party stuff you have. Um, it really will make a difference in your mix. And I never mix without those two plugins ever, regardless of the style of music. And I really love them. And they're really affordable. I, I think you could even buy them as a package for probably less than 200 bucks. They're always running specials over there. So go check them out. I think they're really uh, worth looking into. Um, and the same thing with the Universal Audio stuff. Again, uh, go out to their website, take a look at their stuff. Um, it really is uh, high quality vintage uh, gear in a plug-in um, uh, you know, format uh, to where it doesn't put any tax on your CPU because it has a separate card that you plug into your computer and it's both Mac and PC compatible. So the last uh, plugin I'm going to show you is our mix bus compressor, which we looked at at the beginning of this video. Again, made by Universal Audio, the SSL series real light compression and i always mix into a mix bus compressor and the thing i like to do in the mix bus compressor is i just like to kiss the needle you're going to see uh the threshold here there's like hardly any makeup gain um i got a, a pretty you know medium attack uh, a four to one ratio um i'm going to bring it in and out here with this button so you can hear the difference again it's just to kind of catch the peaks i'm not doing a lot of compression you don't want that big pumping sound you just kind of want to tame the peaks and just kind of glue it all together um, and that's what this compressor is used for so let's just take a listen i will start with it off and then when i turn it on you'll see the needle just just start to move a little bit Okay, so that's pretty much it. Again, just kissing the needle, maybe one to do two dB worth of compression uh, in the hotter sections of the song, and that's really it. Just enough to kind of tame and kind of glue things together. Again, there's no limiter on this because this is kind of a pre-master mix, and as you can tell, we started off at around a negative 12, negative 13 dB. By the time we're done mixing, my mix is usually somewhere around negative 5 to negative 7 dB which is kind of where I want to be so I could bring it into mastering and I have plenty of headroom to uh, to bring up and add some gain and really pump up the volume. So um, again, mixing at a conservative level uh, so I don't have to worry about clipping. And as you can see, outside of the few times that I turned up some faders to exaggerate things so you could hear it, our master fader never clipped once during the, during these this, this demonstration. Um, and again, it, it's, the final is right around the negative six mark. Uh, we'll show you here in a second. She sees everything we are so there we are negative six a little bit above negative six at times in the, in, the, in the last chorus there and that's it so again i hope this is helpful if you have any questions shoot us an email visit our website vision recording studios at yahoo.com go out to the home studio trainer website check out johnny and the boys and what they're doing and we'll talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot.